My name is Lars Christensen and welcome to live stream number 103. Today is December 12th, 2017. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day to join today's live stream where the topic is what's new highlights for December 2017 in Fusion. So last week when I was busy doing some other stuff, um, the awesome development team posted another update, the update for December. It's Christmas, man. It's good stuff. So I just wanted to kind of like show you quickly kind of my highlights. Um, there's a lot of stuff in there, but kind of like, well, hey, stop talking about it. Let's just go in and look at Fusion. If you ever, when Fusion updates, you get kind of like a green bar up here where you can, you can hit something. Well, if you ever kind of like access out of that and you don't know where to go, here's a trick. Go up and click on help. And right down here, what's new in Fusion 360? You click on that and on your other screen, because that's how it always works, <laughs> uh, you will get uh, populated with uh, the blog post that Kiching does such an awesome job writing. So uh, inside of Fusion, click the little question mark, click what's new, and, uh, and then you got kind of like that access. Now, also, uh, hopefully you are subscribed to the Fusion channel where Marty, Bryce and Aaron does the update video. And they're spending about 10, 15 minutes going really in depth, fast about uh, all the, the what's new stuff. And well, there is, there is a lot in here. So, you know, um, definitely, you know, I think it's worth taking a look at some of these things. But what I want to do today is just kind of like give you my three and four kind of thing that you probably should, you know, if somebody asked you, so what happened in December in Fusion? Let me show you. Okay, let's go. Enough of this. So I'm gonna move this over here just in case that I forget something. First thing I wanted to, uh, to jump in to talk about was, and, and Bryce did this really cool, I think, workflow that I kind of want to highlight. It's sheet metal, but you know, sheet metal is not just sheet metal. Uh, you can use it for other things, right? Look at the live stream we did where we did cardboard. Um, so you can do you can do a lot of, of different things uh, with that. Um, but going to sheet metal, and uh, I am just going to start out a new sketch. And um, I'm not drawing anything specific here. I'm just going to go ahead and kind of like draw something up that looks like this. And leave it like that. Should probably fully define it, but whatever. Um, here's the first thing. When you hit the flange tool, and we can drag this part out, notice how now uh, you get to do all your tweaks of the library. So, you know, all your what kind of material you're going to be using. You get to do that right inside of your first flange. Uh, in the past, you had to go up and, and kind of like do it up here. Now you get to do it right in here so you can select uh, whatever, whatever you want. And if this whole thing um, with creating these libraries is new for you, then look at the previous live streams, search sheet metal or send me an email and, and I'll, I'll give you the link for the videos on that. Um, so let's just hit okay to that. So we have our first kind of flans here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead here and create another flans. Just going to select this edge, draw something out like this. Now, you get a lot of different tools in here. So, you know, you can kind of change uh, how, this, how this looks. Now, one thing they added in here that I think is pretty neat is if I create this one down here, notice how you get a warning if the flanges are intersecting one another. That can really easily happen when you are trying to do, to do sheet metal is that the, the flange is kind of like interact uh, or kind of like go in on, on each other. If you hit OK, you will also see that that flange down at the bottom gets yellow. Now I'm almost done with, with, with sheet metal here. Um, just want to show you a couple of different tricks. So of course, we can always go back and we can edit our features. So maybe I change this one back to 90. Now you will see I still get a warning on the outside here. Um, though that this one is 90. So don't forget that in sheet metal, we can kind of like control the bend position. So put it outside. Now suddenly 
uh, we are not uh, interfering anymore. We should actually probably be able to do 90 like that. Hit OK, and now you will see that 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 is uh, that that is not yellow anymore. This would actually work kind of as a sheet metal part. Um, the thing that I wanted to highlight that I thought was really awesome um, that that Bryce kind of showed was. And this is nothing necessarily new. Don't forget, you can jump between workflows inside of Fusion many times. That can be a huge kind of time saver. So if I go back into the modeling environment, I can take and I can mirror this one here. Now, this here is actually a body, right? Remember what we talked about yesterday? It's a sheet metal body, but it's a body. Um, so I can actually go ahead here and just select bodies and the plane, I can just mirror it around this face here. And uh, now we have what? Class? We have two bodies. But don't forget, just like yesterday, we can use the combine tool and we can combine two bodies together. And now it becomes one. What I thought was really cool about what Bryce showed was that, of course, uh, the question is, this was a lot of kind of like tips and tricks mirroring over merging together, what happens if we go back to, to sheet metal and we, for example, uh, decide we're gonna create a flat pattern on here? Well, it still flattens. So I thought that that was uh, absolutely kind of awesome that you can go into the modern environment, mirror it, combine it in there, and sheet metal will still flatten it out. So this is one of those things that you might wanna think about when you're doing sheet metal, if you are doing sheet metal, um, the other thing that I thought was really nice, a lot of people is going to cheer about, is you can now from here export this flat pattern as a DXF. Um, why would you do that? Well, you would do that maybe if you are lazy, you have a laser or water jet, you got to cut this out of. You can now export it out as a DXF, that flat pattern here. Uh, of course, don't forget that you can also use CAM within Fusion to program your water jets. So that's maybe something, or lasers or whatever. That's maybe something else for you to look at at another point. But now they got this export thing, what I thought was uh, extremely uh, awesome. Now, um, I got a question from Art uh, per email. And Art asked, okay, so quick question. When you're doing sheet metal and you flatten it, how do you get... How do you tell the guy on the floor what these bands should be? How do you get that information? This one is for you. So we're going to save uh, this part here because if we save it, then we can actually make it into a 2D drawings. I'm doing a very, I'm doing a very fancy transition over to drawings because I got to show you also what's new in there pretty proud of that. So, so I saved the file. Now I can turn it into a 2D drawing like this. Um, so let's just hit OK. We get into uh, to the drawing here. We are going to get our, our flat pattern. I'm just going to place it uh, so you can show the flattened out stage here. So this is what you do. When you got this, if you go up to the leader symbol up here and you click on the bend line, you get the bends right here, okay? So you just you have the leader symbol and you click right here, that will give them the information that they need. Now we can see this is a little waggy because of the way I drew it up. And you can click on these uh, and you can start moving them around. You can do, you can actually turn them into like a leader if you rather want that so it's not in the way. But this is how you in Sheet Metal would normally show um, that um, depends. Oh, that was useful. Um, now where we are in drawings, okay, this one here is one of those that, you know, <laughs> should probably have been here a long time ago. Go to the file dropdown you can now print 2D drawings. There is a print button. Before you used to have to go up here, create them as, output them as a PDF, and then print the PDFs. But that is uh, a little silly, right? Uh, that should, of course, be a print button in here. Uh, when you do that, you can select 
uh, selected sheets in certain ranges and, and things like that. So uh, to uh, whoever on the development team got that one in there, thumbs up for you. Okay, um, I knew I was gonna make this short. What else did I wanted to talk about? Oh yeah, so <laughs> this one here is perfect. Um, if you are into cam, this is all saved. You maybe did you watch Friday's live stream where not Friday, the Friday before, where we talked about chamfers and fillets, how to do uh, all those, um, how to machine lead in, leads out, and chamfers and all that stuff. Well, um, what I showed you was that we could use uh, the three D contour to uh, to machine. Um, a, uh, a fillet, an outside fillet like this. Well, two days later, three days later, and of course the CAM team decides to come up with a new toolpath called Flow. Now, Flow is underneath the multi-axis drop-down. Now you might be, if you don't have a multi-axis CNC machine, you might be like, well, wait a minute, I, I don't wanna go up underneath multi-axis, don't worry about it. It's because it actually has uh, multi-axis capabilities, so like five axis, four axis capabilities in it, um, but it should actually probably live both in the 3D drop-down and in the uh, multi-axis. It's a little different than uh, the other toolpath. Let me show you. If you have, uh, I did a, a live stream on kind of like the contour menu of uh, Fusion. So what we did when we did the the live stream, not last Friday, but the Friday before, what I did when I selected uh, the tool pass for the 3D contour to do this round was I used selection, and you see how I selected that chain there, kind of like saying I want my boundary to be within that. Now, uh, the 3D contour tool path do not machine zero surfaces or flat surfaces, so that's why we get this little uh, area here. The new flow toolpath is different. So where the contour toolpath used kind of like that boundary uh, selection I had, what the multi-axis toolpath uses is it's using the actually surface. So it's not using a boundary. It's actually looking at the surface that you're selecting and, and following the, the data inside of that surface. Now, one thing you will see here as I'm selecting this is that some of the arrows goes along and uh, some of them goes up and down. Uh, you can click on these and they will go um, the other direction, but you can actually also go over to the passes tab and you can choose here to say all along V or all along U. That's kind of like the axis of a surface. Uh, so you can go in here. Actually, I thought I was gonna change all of them, but it did not. All right, so I do have to do it manually. Go in like, okay, so now they're all at the same direction. Now I know I can go in and change them to all being this direction or all along you. So you do this, you just select the surfaces you want to machine, and then you can go in here and you can create the numbers of steps you want along that surface. Um, because now it's just gonna, it's literally just looking at the surface data and following that surface data. So I don't know how many we had before, but we maybe say 15. Uh, we want 15 here. You have some other kind of like options in here. You can go both ways, uh, whatever you kind of want, but let's just hit okay. And you get a beautiful a flow surface that will machine down here. And again, when I talked about machining this in, um, in the, in the, cam video, uh, you will see that down at the end of this tool path, that if we go to the right surface, zoom in, you will see that the tool makes sure that it does go down tangent with that. So so that's exactly what you what you want. That's why if you're looking at this, whoops, if you're looking at this, you're thinking why are the blue lines going so f much past the radius well, it's because the blue line represent the tip of the tool, but to be able to machine this radius, we just want that intersection between the radius of the tool and this one here. 
So, Flow Toolpath underneath multi-axis, but it works with 3D machining. It's only because it does have an option in here, right click, hit edit, where you can turn on multi-axis, what will give you the tilt and all that stuff, okay? So that is the new uh, flow uh, tool path here. Um, the other thing that I want you to be aware of is if we're going to look at the tool in CAM, and let's go ahead and look at this end mill here, edit tool, notice how the cutter, some people should, should uh, you know, applaud for this one. Uh, look how they got this in from, it's definitely an inventor HSM. It might also be an HSM works, now I can't remember. But they got this much better looking tool. This should make it a lot better to find out what does they mean when they're talking about flute length versus body length versus overall length. So I've had a few questions about this when it comes to the cutters and this diagram is definitely a lot better uh, to kind of like get an idea about what these different uh, numbers are right here. So um, again, if you go up and you click on the question mark, you click on what's new, uh, you get the whole slew of things that is what new in the December release. And there was a lot more than, don't forget to watch the um, Marty, uh, Bryce and Aaron's video. There was a lot more stuff in here. Uh, if you pull icons off, uh, you can put them back again. Um, there was some new um, guide surfaces for the suite tool, maybe a little bit more advanced, something we may be gonna do an example on later on. Of course, also, Aaron always shows a lot of good things for simulation, so, uh, so be aware of that. But what I wanted to highlight today, if you just joined us, um, what I wanted to highlight was the new function in sheet metal, where you get populated with your first flans to change something. Don't forget how you can jump workspaces and use the mirror combine and still flatten. Now you can save your, your flat pattern out as a DXF, just with a click of a button. So that is absolutely useful. Also in drawings, you can print. Now that's actually in the file dropdown, that's a print and then uh, the cool cancels. That was uh, what I took away from the what's new that I definitely want to make sure that you guys were aware of that they added in there. They did other things. Don't forget about Fusion in the browser. Uh, they added some functions in there from the modeling workspace. So if you want to check that out, you definitely can. All right, man. I hope that that was uh, useful. Tomorrow, same time, 3 p.m. Eastern, we are going to get in and do some, uh, some modeling. We're going to do a flywheel in Fusion. So that is for tomorrow. For tomorrow. I hope you're doing good. I hope that you are having an awesome day. And this was just a little bit useful, just adding a little bit of value. Don't forget my email address is down in the description. If there's any future topics, we'll make sure we get it on the list. Until tomorrow, friends, hope you have an awesome day. And the broadcast, if you're watching the recording, thank you so much. And um, I'll jump in the live stream and say hi to everybody in the live chat. Take care, guys.